<laughs> Is there more? I think the flavor is like nutrients. Hi, today we're in uh, Bolinas with uh, John Glavis at Biodiversity. Yeah, Botiera Biodiversity, Biodiversity Research Gardens. Right, and uh, what a facility here. It's absolutely amazing. We're here in the greenhouse and we've got these these fruit here, these tree tomatoes. We've got several varieties of these here, John. Yeah, actually, we're what we're doing is we're trialing all these different indigenous food plants from all over the world. And this tree tomato is from the Peruvian Andes. And it's one of the many, many fruits that we're trialing for this part of Northern California because we're very excited about the un underutilized crops and, and plants that have been used in different places by different people for, for so long. So also in the greenhouse here we have uh, pepino melons and ground cherries and... Now, coming back to this tree tomato, mm -hmm. can you grow this outdoors here? Yeah, we're experimenting with that right now. Last year we grew a couple trees outside. They didn't grow quite as big, but they're just as delicious. And so what we're trying to find is, you know, what are the limits of these these plants and, and environments, and also knowing that global warming is going on right now too, we're trialing plants that are, have a, a wide range of, of variety of, of climate so that we're hopeful that as we discover more and more food crops that are not uh, so specific in terms of the temperature and the water and the use, that way uh, maybe if, if the climates start really ch uh, changing a lot we might have a, a series of plants that would work in that kind of changing environment also. And so what's great about the tree tomato and other, other um, uh, members of that same family is that these are, are really delicious fruits that, that people can grow that are often not seen in, in the United States. The nice thing also about these plants is they produce their fruit in December, January, February when you don't have anything else. And it's high vitamin C and so it, it comes at a really good time. And mashua is one of the, it, it's, it's a tuber that comes from the Andes, one of the many different tubers that nobody ever hears about. And we grow these, oka, yukon, there's a, several more of the kind of lost crops of the in, uh, Inca. And I would suggest to anybody who's interested, um, that book, Lost Crops of the Inca, has all of these, these in it. These are two kinds of Brigmansia. This is a, a, a plant that's found in usually the upper areas, a higher altitude of, of the Andes, uh, sometimes towards the jungle in, in Peru and Bolivia. But it's also a very, very beautiful flower. There are many species, some of them very pendular and, and large. Here's the two that, that we have here that you can see. Cut this leaf. Watch this leaf. And all this yellow that's coming at it right now, this is called chalcon. Is an antioxidant that that is being studied now by Tufts University. It seems to really knock out liver cancer. Um, they're very excited about it, and um, I've been in touch with several of these researchers, and they said you're growing Ashitaba. This is the Styrian pumpkins, and these are the the pumpkin that's that that's grown in in the the province of Styria, Austria. And there is a very specific industry on pressing the seeds for oil. So there's a pumpkin seed oil that you see in like Whole Foods and things that's very expensive. You know, that's where this comes from originally. And these are the seeds. They're a hullless seed. There's no hull on them. So uh, they're also really delicious and high protein. And um, it's nice having a seed that doesn't have a seed coat on it. This is the, it's called tarwi, which is the Andean lupin. And it comes from, again, Highland, uh, Peru, Ecuador, Bolivia. And everything about this plant is wonderful. It smells absolutely honey-like. It's a delicious smell. It's a nitrogen fixer. It produces these pods, as you can see, with very large seeds in them. And I have actually, I wanted to give you some of these. This is the seed they produce. And you can see the, uh, they look a lot like soybeans. And they're 40% protein. And so when you, you have to soak them and cook them a special way, but um, they're feeding the children in, in the uh, Andean schools with uh, lupin seeds now, which I think is really great. I mean, to be able to grow flowers to feed children to me is about as good as it gets. <laughs> so John, we really appreciate you uh, facilitating us here and inviting us to your garden. So thanks a million. And uh, we look forward to 
seeing you again in the not too distant future and also at the National Heirloom Exposition. Well, we're really looking forward to that also, and it's been such a great pleasure. Baker Seed to me is, is a forerunner in, in the field of, of uh, these heirloom seeds, and I'm, I congratulate you on the incredible work that you did to bring the first National Heirloom Festival to the United States. That was teamwork.